Hello, and thank you for joining Purdue Extension Health and Human Sciences Active Aging March Nutrition Series. Today's presentation is going to focus on food budgeting. My name is Brittany Shorey, and I'm from LaGrange County, and Kidani Sarko also joins us today from Allen County. If at any time you have a question, please feel free to utilize the chat box feature. I will be monitoring it as well as Kidani. If you're joining us today by telephone, we'll be sticking around after the presentation, so you will have an opportunity to ask questions via phone. Thank you again for joining us today, and without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Kidani. Thank you, Brittany, and thank you everyone for joining us. We are excited for this presentation. Um, so how can you get the most for your money. Have a food budgeting plan that will help you spend your food dollars more wisely. According to the National, according to the National Restaurant Association, the average American ages eight and above eats four times a week out. Young adult under age 27 eat out even more. Eating out has become a lifestyle. Is this the best way to spend your food dollar? So we have to ask ourselves, it might be for some, it might be a way to save money, but for most it may not be. So is eating out the best way to save our money? It costs time to save money, and it costs money to save time. So the, the big part is meal planning. Make time. Make the time. Does anyone here do a meal planning? If you do, just put in the chat box, you say yes and no. Does anyone do a meal plan? If yes, can you share why you meal plan and what you like about it? What you meal plan and what do you like about it? Can you just share? Take a minute and if, if you meal plan, share why, why you meal plan and what do you like about meal planning? There is no right or wrong way to meal plan. The key is finding what works best for you and for your family. Learning how to meal plan a menu may save more money on your food budget than any other skill. Here are some things to think about. Time and energy may be limited. It takes time to meal plan. So set aside some time for you to sit down and plan out your meals. The more you do it, the quicker it gets. It also helps to save some of your old menu grocery lists for the menu to make them easy and to reuse during busy times. Start by writing down meals you want to eat. It's important to remember what your family needs, likes and dislikes are. If they don't eat it, it's the waste of money. Take breakfast, lunch, snacks, and dinner into consideration. What nutrients does everyone need? Keep in mind that young children and, ad and older adults have different nutritional needs. Also consider intolerance, sensitivities, allergies of those that are eating your food. Consider your schedule, plan menus and choose easy meals you can prepare quickly for busy days. Save time consuming meals or cooking in bulk for when you have more time. 
think about how many will be eating at each time. Will you be eating away from home for certain meals? So then you should buy less food. It's hard to make food budget if you don't have an overall idea of your income and expenses. Start by tracking your expenses. Keep track of all the money your family actually spends on food for at least a week. Include work, lunch, restaurant meals, vending machine snacks, and convenience store stops. Be sure to write down everything. Keep receipts to help verify. Then multiply that number by four to tell you what you are spending on food each month. Once you see how much you regularly spend on food, but on food and groceries, you can make a plan to spend more efficiently. Brittany is gonna share a link that would help online calculator to see how much you are spending per week. So Brittany will share that. We will also include it in the follow-up email. The US Department of Agriculture found the cost of food eaten at home for a family of four can range from $526 to $1,186 a month or more, depending on the age of your family members and even more important, how thrifty you are in your spending. The average American family spends a dollar and 22 cents for every $1 earned. So that means we are overspending. For every $1 earned, we are spending a dollar and 22 cents. So that shows we are overspending. Create a budget and examine your total income and your total expenses. A budget is a plan for spending money. When you are making your budget, determine the amount of money you have in your household budget to spend on food. According to the US Department of Agriculture, Americans spend on average around 6% of their budget on food. However, the study also showed that they also spend 5% of their disposable income on dining out. That makes you food budget about 11% of your overall income, but this can vary from house to house. Make sure the budget is realistic and works for you. A budget that works for my household, it may not work for your household. I might be a big family. I might have a teenager who eats a lot. So it varies. So make sure that budget is according to your own need. Make sure that number you end up with for your food dollars in relation to how often you buy groceries. So for example, if I bring home $1,500 a month and I'm just looking at food now, not other expenses that would need to be budgeted. And I estimate that about 11% of my money goes towards either buying groceries or eating out, I would take I would take 1,500 times 11%, which is 11% 1,500, that would give us $220. So each month, I would estimate about $220 to go towards food. If there are four weeks in a month, divide $220 by four, then I will get $55 a week. Revisit your budget often know what you can spend and how much you have for extras. If you go over your grocery budget by just $8 each week, that, up, that adds up to $400 by the end of the year. So we have to be careful. When you meal plan, take inventory of what you already have. 
before you go to the store, look into the freezer, the cabinets, the fridge, and what needs to be trashed. Plan to use what you already have on hand. This saves you money because you already own this food. Also pay attention to your trash, knowing that food you throw out each week helps you understand what foods you didn't eat. You can use smaller recipes or buy ingredients you are more likely to actually cook with. Plan the week's menu from items on sale. This really will you save dollars, especially for expensive purchases like meat. Buy in season. Compare advertised recipe prices among stores to find where you can save the most on your shelf to advertise specials or, or sales. So like as I said before, it costs money to save time and it, it, it costs time to save money. You know, when we go store to store to save money, it's costing us time. I'm comparing Kroger, Walmart, Myers, whatever that may be, whatever your favorite store. So be in mind, does it worth the time I'm spending? Does it worth the money I'm saving? Also compare the written price on the shelf to advertise specials or sales. Think about saving some for later. Think of foods you can cook once and eat twice. And consider building leftover days to help you eat things you possibly would have ended up throwing away. In your meal plan, you can put into some day, say this day, this dinner, Tuesday dinner or Thursday dinner, whatever that may be, you can say, I am eating the leftover from what I cook during the weekend. Freeze leftover in a single serving. In a single serving reusable container. This helps you meal plan later when you need a quick meal in pinch. The, these steps are interchangeable. Like as I said, some plan work for one family, it may not necessarily work for another. The time you spend planning your meals can save you hundreds of dollars over the course of the year. Maybe when we save $5 on a sale, it may not be a big deal, but over a year that adds up. Making a meal plan is easier than most people think. Once you get used to it, making a weekly menu will seem easy and you will wonder how ever got along without one. So when you make it a habit, you just can't do anymore without planning it. So it might be hard to start with, but it gets easier. And that's what you'll do every time once you're used to it. <clears throat> like as I say, take your inventory. What do you have in your freezer, in your cabinet, in your pantry? What needs to be trashed? What needs to be used? What's on set? Save time. So that will be the big, the key is plan, plan, plan. Buy and use food wisely. We said that when you take, when you are taking inventory, think about your trash. The most expensive food you buy is the food you throw away. That's the most expensive food. If you buy it, if you don't use it, you throw it away, money is wasted. That is the most expensive food. You lose money when you throw food away. The average American household throws away 14% of their food in the trash per year, according to USDA funded study in 2004. That average is about $600 per year. That's a lot of money. To ensure that you are not throwing your food dollars away, here is a list of 
things you can do to avoid waste. First, buy correct amount. Before shopping, check the pantry, refrigerator, freezer, to find out what you have on hand and avoid over buying of perishable items. Even if it is on sale, if you are not going to use it, you don't have to buy it in bulk. Only buy the amount of food you can store and use before it spoils. The other thing to consider, dead food. When putting food away in pantry, refrigerator or freezer, write the date on it and large print with a, with a Sharpie or what makes it easy for you. So you can quickly glance in your freezer and see what food you need to use up first. Write the date on the canned foods too. Rotate oldest items to the front and use them before expire. First in, first out. That's what we call in food safety. First in, first out. So dates that have longer time that can stay, put them, put them to the back so that the one that you put them before to the front so that you can use them first. That way you are not wasting any money and it's not spoiling. The other thing to consider, plan to use leftovers. Our grandmother used to cook roast ham or chicken on Sundays and would plan the week's menu around that. Plan to use leftovers in your meal plan. They can be used in casseroles, soups for snacks, and in lunch boxes. Recycle last night hamburgers in, into beef and bean tacos for tonight. Leftover roast chicken into tomorrow's lunch as chicken salad. Ideas for using leftovers include create a leftover or to use, to use up list and to post it on the fridge have a soup container in the freezer for bits of leftover veggie broth it's it. See thorough storage container for refrigerated leftovers. Use leftovers in next day breakfast, lunch, snack, or dinners. Label dead freeze leftover main dishes in meal plant size servings. So it is just good to, to take a minute and think about your upcoming, you know, what's your meal plan coming up? Can you just think about those lists? You know, when you are when are you doing grocery? What lists do you have? I mean, it would be easier if you have your freezer and uh, hopefully you are there. If you can check, just give a glance to your pantry. I mean, it'd be easier, what do you have? When are you going to do grocery? What do you have already? What's your list looks like? What are you planning for the next week? So again, remember, it costs, it costs time to save money and it costs money to save time. So it's one way around, is it worth it? Make a list and check it twice. Your grocery list should be based off your meal plan. When we have a meal plan for a week, when we planned out, when I do my grocery, it should reflect based on that plan. The list should be based on staples you need to restock, ingredients you need to complete recipes, what you already have and what's on sale. It helps to make your grocery list according to the store layout. So my grocery list usually has produce first, then meat, then dry goods, then dairy, then frozen. This helps me go through the store quicker and more efficiently. Also make note on your list where you are using a coupon or taking advantage of a store sale so you remember to hand over those coupons at checkout. A time saver is to build your list throughout the week. 
keep your list where you can conveniently uh, add to it. Maybe there is a running list on your phone or on the fridge, in your wallet, whatever that may be. Sticking to your list helps save your money. People who shop with a list and buy little else spend less money on groceries. When we go grocery without a list, we just tend to buy everything we like, everything we see. But if we already determine with our plan at home, this week, this is what I need. This is, these are the things that I'm going to buy for the plan that I have. Then we just stick with it. That way we are saving money and we will not waste any leftover or our grocery won't go bad. For your grocery list, buy enough that you only have to go to the store once a week. It is recommended, make sure you, you, know, you have a plan that only makes you go to the grocery store once a week only. Multiple trips to the grocery store costs your time and money. There are many smartphone apps that can help you plan and create grocery lists. We will share that in the follow-up email. The other thing, build your own brown bag lunch. To get the most highest quality and most nutrition for your money, brown bag it. We are not only saving money by having a brown bag lunch, we are also eating nutritious food. You know, I, I'm guilty of this sometime, you know, I just, you know, um, leave the house early and you know, without preparing my lunch and I end up eating outside, not only it is taking my money, it may not necessarily be a healthy, nutritious food to me. Many wise, we can compare it here on the slide. Average lunch and drink out on average, it costs uh, $10.50. But if you have your own, you know, brown bag lunch, only three to four dollars. So there is a huge difference. If we multiply that by a week, when you go out, you are spending more than $52. But if you are preparing that from home, just about $20. Over a year, 200, if that's like 2000, 730, a lot of dollars when compared to just about, you know, a thousand dollars. That's even the most. So there is a way to save money by preparing my brown bag lunch. Also, it will help me eat healthy. It will help me to use what's in my hand already in my fridge, in my pantry, in my freezer. So, so take a minute and see if you can create your grocery list. Just take two minutes and think about, you know, what, what do you need? You know, what you already have? What recipe are you making? What's lunch for this week? What's dinner? What's breakfast? Just think about those. For the dishes that you are planning, do you have the ingredients that you need? What ingredients do you need? Some find it easier to list everything needed and then cross item off as they find they already have them. Some would rather list while they search and only write what needs to be purchased. Don't forget items that complement main dishes like thraps, sauce. Okay, now I will let Brittany continue. Thank you, Kidani. All right, so now you've got your meals all planned out and you've made your list. So now it's time to go to the store. You can shop smart by sticking to the perimeter of the store. And this is generally where you're going to find the healthier options anyways. So if you're watching what you eat, this is a good option to stick by. 
Um, note that many people say to not go to the store if you're hungry. Some of you probably can attest to that. I know I've done that myself and it doesn't always go well because I tend to purchase more when I'm hungry. Um, not only will this help you not buy things, but that you don't really need, but it's gonna help you from eating everything at once when you get home too. Certainly healthy foods like nuts and grains and canned foods will be in the center aisles. So go down the ones that you need something from first and then avoid the rest of those aisles so you don't purchase those unnecessary things. If it's possible, limit the amount of people you bring with you to the store as well. More people means more chance of an impulse buy. And those candy bars at the checkout lane can really add up if you do that every time you grocery shop. Kidani, you can go to the next slide. So consider some canned, frozen, and fresh produce. So these are gonna be some, some, some ways to shop smart. If you have the freezer space, frozen vegetables as are as nutritious, as nutritious as fresh produce, and they can save you, save you prep time, and they're usually on sale much cheaper than fresh produce. This is a great time saver and a good buy also. Canned beans or vegetables are also a great option and can make adding nutritious ingredients to meals really easy. Make sure you read the label to check out sodium content and the ingredient list to make sure they're unflavored. Canned and frozen options have a longer shelf life as well. So if your plans uh, are to change midweek, and you don't have to worry about wasting money or throwing out fresh produce that went bad. So in the long run, you're still saving money. If you're not buying fresh produce, consider what is in season. Right, Kidani, you can go to the next slide, please. So budget busters. So this means when you buy food, you don't really need it. A list helps curb that impulse buying that I talk about, talked about a couple slides ago. Some other suggestions could include not shopping when you're hungry, like I mentioned. Um, you're not likely to buy more food when you're hungry, like I said earlier. Feed yourself and your kids before you go, uh, so you won't be tempted to buy on off of your food list that week or whenever you're going shopping. Being aware of specials and coupon offers also invite you for, to buy in um, to buy impulsively. So make sure you're really getting the best bargain. If you have a grocery store pickup, this, this could be a good way to avoid impulse purchasing. I had seen that someone had mentioned that in the chat box earlier. So really um, buying online and picking your groceries up is also a good way to save money long-term. All right, time is money. Have an open dialogue. What what would work for you to meal prep? For example, because I work full time and tend to work at least one to two evenings per week, it works best for me and my husband. I prep everything all at once. For example, every Sunday, I usually cook all of our meals for the week. We then eat each meal as if it was a leftover and everyone can choose what they want. This doesn't work well for everyone. You may choose to prep each night, maybe one to two nights each week, Again, it looks different for everyone. You can cut vegetables up for the week um, each day so you can grab an easy snack. So not only are you saving money in the long term, but you're also eating healthier as well. The Food Marketing Institute, I was gonna read that statistic, sorry, Kidani. The Food Marketing Institute estimates that shoppers spend um, $2.17 for every minute they're in the store. So that's just a fun statistic for you to think about. And lastly, we have some resources for you if you want some additional information on food budgeting or any type of nutritional classes. Um, I highly recommend you reach out to your local um, extension office as well as your HHS or Health and Human Science Extension Educator for additional information. Thank you again for joining us today. We would love to hear your feedback from today, and we ask that you complete an anonymous survey providing us with your feedback. Kidani is gonna go ahead and drop the link in the chat box if, if you're able to, Kidani. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to stick around for a few minutes, or if you reach out to us via email, that's fine too. Our information was on the PowerPoint, 
Um, and you'll also re be receiving an email with additional information. For those of you who are joining by telephone today, go ahead and stick around if you have any questions. Join us next week to learn about the basics of food labeling and how they can be useful for consumers. Thank you again for joining us today. One second, I will um, have the link ready. Here you go.